Halo semua, selamat sejahtera and welcome to today's podcast. I'm going to be your moderator today. My name is Regine Yeltsin, B0419-8003, from Batch 56 at Kahap. Today, we are so glad to carry out this educational podcast on the topic of Peperum, Lokia, and Dolores Palsu. Now, I would like to introduce our beloved Ethan to talk about Peperum. Hi, Ethan. Can you please unmute your mic and introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Ethan Lau Chu Yong, name B0498004 from FKH56. Today, I'll be talking about Vaporium. Vaporium is defined as the time from the delivery of the placenta through the first few weeks after the delivery. This period is usually considered to be six weeks in duration. By six weeks after delivery, most of the changes of pregnancy, labor, and delivery have resolved and the body has reverted to the non-pregnant state. Any questions? Yeah, may I ask like, what are the complications of preparing? Um. The common complications of purpurium would be fever and infection, as well as uh, mild ranges in mild rises in temperature, for example, in the context of lactation, wound infections, urinary tract, written infections, and mastitis to a severe and sometimes septic course due to endomyometritis. Then I would like to know how does it infect the preparium? An infection in the preparium occurs when the bacteria infects the uterus and surrounding areas after a female gives birth. It is also known as postpartum infection. So talking about the preparium, may I know what is the difference between the postnatal and the preparium? Both would refer to the period after birth. However, postpartum is correlated with the mother's condition after birth. Where else postnatal refers to the baby? Then are there any minor disorders in preparium? Minor disorders of preparium, which are normally commonly found in postnatal mothers, are after pain, constipation, abdominal tenderness, burning on urination, edema on legs, diuresis, perineal pain, and breast engorgement. Okay, thank you so much for Ethan. Now, me, myself, Regine, B0419803, would like to discuss about Lokia. So, Lokia is a vaginal discharge you have after a vaginal delivery. It actually uh, is a stale, it's a mucor odor like kind of menstrual discharge. So Lokia for the first three days after delivery is generally dark red in color and a few small blood clot, no larger, no large blood clot is a normal sign. So for the fourth day onwards, the delivery, the delivery uh, after the delivery, the Lokia will be more watery and pinkish. So from about the seven days above, so it will be from a pinkish brownish color turned into the creamy yellowish white color. So for generally info, uh, there's three types of lokia. So lokia rubra, lokia alba, lokia serosa. These three types of lokia is actually uh, defined at a different stage of lokia following by the birth. So they also have like the uh, mucus kind of, because it's a blood, so there's kind of like um, irony smell from the discharge. Yep. Is there any question? Wow, that's interesting. But I am curious. 
doesn't it sound familiar to menstruation? Are they a different thing? Oh, it's actually a very good question. Huh? Look at it's like, yeah, it's actually similar to the menstruation blood, since it's blood, right? But it's typically it's heavier and lasts longer than the normal period. Um, it also like contains some elements that is not found in the menstruation blood, like the remnants from the placenta that cannot be found in the menstruation cycle, menstruation blood. So <clears throat> as the locat passes, it may look uh, pink, brown, yellow, or watery instead of stop like period like that. Yeah. So I heard you say that there are three types of lochia and lochia stages. Can I know more about it? Yeah, sure. Um, so lochia rubra is the first stage. So lochia rubra occurs is only like day one or day two, day day two to day five after after delivery. So the this is this stage is heaviest bleeding uh, uh in that three stage uh will be occurred and that's more blood clot. So the second stage is locus serosa. So like locus serosa is usually lasts about like two weeks after the delivery, and it changed from the blood clot like a reddish dark red color turn into a pinkish, much watery, so slightly lighter than the previous stage, and this is because the placenta wound is still healing, so they might have a little blood clot compared to the previous stage. So the last stage is locus alba. Finally, this stage is only lasts about like two to six weeks. Six weeks. It need to depends on the body. So the locat changes from a pink yellow um, to a yellowish creamy light color, and uh, the discharge is actually uh turning this color is mainly made up of white blood cell. Uh, this is because the white blood cell need to be eliminated out of the body after uh done healing with the placenta wood. Pardon me, but since we're talking about the color, what about the smell? What causes foul-smelling lochia? Uh, yeah, just now I mentioned about the smell, but I didn't really go detail on it, which is a good question. So the foul-smelling lochia would uh, actually generally smells like a fishy smells or like a greenish lochia can actually uh, indicate the contamination of infection like that or infection because it's like a wound work. and then blood is the, you know, it's a very good medium for the incubation of bacteria or that. It can be, actually don't worry, it, but it can be like treated by antibiotics and we have other signs like unnecessary must have like contamination, contamination or infection. It actually can be any other sign to such as like uh, chills, fast pulse rate, pain or tenderness, or like uh, tummy tight like that, or high temperature. Uh, this is the other sign uh, indicating the contamination or infection. Um, I'm sorry, Eugene. I know it's kind of off topic, but can I know it is normal for past bottom bleeding to stop and then start again? Uh, oh. It's uh from what from what I know it's actually quite common, like on and off like that. Although because the blood loss will taper off the days, weeks go by, around a week or two after bleeding seems to have stopped. Like you will see at last, but maybe eventually stop for a day. It can suddenly start to back up again because uh this is like part of the normal process to um for the placenta side scap to start start to come off like that. Right? So this additional bleeding should only like last for a few days more like that. So it's not a big deal. Mm. So that's all from my part. Um, I hope you learned something about Lokia. Finally, finally, welcome the last guest in the house, Xiao Rong, to tell us about Dolores Pausu. Xiao Rong, you may actually unmute yourself and uh, the time is yours. Thank you, Regine. Hello, everyone. I'm Xiao Rong, Min B0419825. I'm from Angkatan 56, F FKH. Uh, now I'm going to share some of the knowledge about the Dolores Palsu. Dolores Palsu is a term to describe forced labor contraction in animals. Before true labors begin, some animals will have forced labor pain, also known as Braxton Hicks contraction. 
This contraction occur during the final weeks, like two to four weeks of the pregnancy, or happen right before the fetal expulsion phase and preparation phase. Braxton Hicks normally happen in goats, dogs, cat, cattle, uh, pigs, uh, but less in horses. These are the general info I have for you. Uh, anything you want to know more? Uh, I'm surprised to hear that so many animals will get the horse <laughs> Anyway, is it uh, normal for those animals to have false labor contractions? Uh, actually, these contractions are normal for either human or animals. Braxton Hicks contractions are, uh, are thought to play a role in toning the uterine muscle in preparation for the birth contraction. And then uh, sometimes Braxton Hicks contractions are referred to the practice for labor. So the contraction are caused when the muscle fibers in the uterus is tightened and then relaxed. So this contraction of the uterine muscle may also play a role in promoting the blood flow to the placenta so that the oxygen-rich blood enters the fetal circulation. So let's say if you see a goat uh, curling into the sea over her belly or even doing the back stretch, or if you see a cow is kicking at her belly, so you don't have to worry about it. That is normal. Do you have any other question? I can imagine what you're saying, but how can you tell if the animal is having true or false labor contraction? Mm, in contrast to the contraction of true labor, Braxton Hicks contraction do not occur at regular intervals and they do not get stronger over time and do not last longer over time and they do not occur at predictable intervals, and they may disappear, although for a time, uh, they tend to become more frequent towards the end of the pregnancy. But true labor contraction come at regular intervals, and as time goes on, they get closer together and stronger. For example, if an animal is showing an obvious sign of contraction, uh, like dripping milk uh, during this contraction, but then shut down on the next hour, uh, that will be the sign of Braxton Hicks. Mm. Mm, I see. Mm, what about, can I know what is the reason or is there any causes of, the, of this dolorous palsu? Uh, yeah, there are many causes for this dolorous palsu. Uh, the factors such as bacteria or viral infection, the death of fetus, uh, prolapses of vagina, hormonal imbalance, trauma injury, uh, malnutrition or a change in the environment, for example, the temperature change uh, or the moving of fetus. Uh, basically, la, all kind of stress that cause the animal have mental or even physical distress will be the factor of Bra uh, Brox uh, Braxton Hicks. I'm sorry. Mm, you have any other question? Um, it, I heard you say that temperature is one of the causes of Dolores palsu, but how does it happen? Um, actually, it is all about dehydration. So temperature is considered the main reason to, that caused Braxton Hicks in animal, la, by the way. And then animals are likely to get dehydrated during the pregnancy, especially when the weather is very hot. So in serious case, the animal could feel dizzy or even faint. So we need to ensure the environment they are staying is cool and then well ventilated. Uh, in conclusion, dolorous palsu means fake or false labor contraction. If it happens to uh, one of your cat or your dog, there will be nothing much we can do to treat or control them. Um, all we can do is to make sure the environment is comfortable for them to stay and try to reduce any stress that, like noise. Um, they will be all from me. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's a very educative thing, and very helpful and educational. I hope to see you in our next podcast. Thank you and stay safe. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.